a car that lights a passion also. I used to own a 60 Thunderbird. You have a 59 here. That's right. Here. You said you yeah. had a 60. Uh, this, is, this is very nice, and it's a convertible. So tell us about this car. Well, this one, I couldn't believe I found this one in this color. My favorite TV show in 59, and it was a top show on, on the air, was 77 Sunset, Sunset Strip. Strip with Aunt yeah, Cookie Burns. Uh -huh. And Efren Zimbalist Jr. drove one just like this, this color scheme. And I was in an apartment in, in South Everett where I lived in the mid-70s, and two girls drove up in this car, and I couldn't believe it. And I walked over, and I said, this is just what I've always wanted. And they said, oh, this? It's Dad's car. He thinks it's neat. And they, they didn't even want to be seen in uh. it. And of course, I had to meet him. He lived about a mile away. About a year and a half or so later, I was able to buy the car for a whopping $1,500. Uh, I know that uh, the public back then, and people are still saying it, they got really mad at Ford when they went from a two-seater to a four-seater. However, was, uh, their sales doubled, so they knew what they were doing. Well, that was uh, a gentleman who just passed away, and he's known more for his uh, Vietnam era time frame, and that's Robert McNamara. Right. He came into Ford and he was all business. Uh -huh. And he said, the little bird is cute, but it's not a good business proposition. And they came up with this and uh, they built this car and the other car I have in the brand new Wixom plant. And they built the plant just so they could make the unibodies that these were made of. And they had never done this before. It was a personal four seater, a console, very low, and it, it broke all sorts of rules and moles. It had a cross-flow radiator. They never tried that before. And in 58, they had a big recession that was short-lived. And this was the only success. Mm. This car, they had uh, overtime going on these, and they couldn't build them fast enough. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the stories that I've heard that makes sense is uh, these are somewhat rare because in the demolition derby community, oh. <laughs> because of the unibody, and plus all the sculpting, which gave, it, uh, gave them extra, extra strength. Body strength. These were very popular in demolition derby, so a lot of them met their demise in, in that. I remember one at a wrecking yard back in the 70s. It, was, it looked as nice as this, and there it was sitting in the wrecking yard just because of, what, a transmission probably or something. Uh -huh. It made you sick. I, I couldn't save everything. Uh -huh. Well, speaking of the transmission, what do you have for running gear in this? What's, what, well, which this motor is, do you have? And... This came pretty much one way. You've got the 352 V8 with the Cruisomatic 3-speed. And uh, the first year it came out in 58, it had coil springs in the back because they were thinking of doing air suspension. But they didn't, so this has leaf springs. The uh, interesting option you could get on this, and very few people ordered it, is you could get the Lincoln 430 cubic inch engine in it with the cruisomatic, and uh, this speedometer goes to 140 and there's a collector who claims you can hold this at 140 uh, with that 430. But you haven't tested that. I, no. <sighs> Too many bugs crushing all over the uh -huh. front of the car. One of the things that I think is so special about, I'd say uh, definitely starting with 58, well maybe even uh, 55, but especially 58 because of the back seat, mm -hmm. on into the mid to late 60s, is the interiors on Thunderbirds are so gorgeous and so unique and so classy and so sporty all at the same time. Okay. They, they were the first to pioneer the fourth seat seating arrangement. The console and the high door sills were what made the car strong because it's a unibody. Mm -hmm. And to lower it, they had to encroach on those areas. Uh -huh. So the console was a new idea, the personal seating. And later in uh, the mid-60s, they had that lounge seating in the back. Uh, right, that yeah. looked like big a couch, big yeah. couch. Uh -huh. And uh, overhead consoles came in later on uh, with the, the controls. The back seat looked like a booth at Dino's that you exactly. mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then the dashboard on these, a, a little bit Corvette-y looking, just a little bit because it's got the matching things. The two things. pods. Yeah, but uh, really, really good looking. And, and chrome, the whole dash is chrome and it's heavy metal. You, you lower the glove box door and you could break a kneecap yeah, if you weren't yeah. careful. Hey. They were built. I mean, you know when you close the door on this car, and it's you solid. You know, yeah. Have you had to re-chrome anything like the front bumper? Every bit of chrome on this is original. Okay, because you don't want to have to do a front bumper on no, this not thing. On one. Yeah, you'll... They, uh, Ford was so intense on getting the styling right on these that their regular bumper manufacturer wouldn't stamp that much steel because it's so big, the bumper grill. And they finally found a company that would make it one piece so that it would look right. Uh -huh. It had to look right. Style was everything. The term I liked was uh, gentleman's hot rod. Good term. Yeah. I that Although, was... uh, to be honest, these, these don't handle very well in corners. No. They're well, very nose heavy. The engine exactly. got shoved forward yeah. uh, for style. Uh -huh. and. Uh, 
They're a boulevard cruiser. Yeah, my my uh, 60 liked to. Uh, oh, you, that's right. You'd, you'd you know. turn the wheel and then you'd kind of give it a little time and then they would do a little nose dive and then finally exactly. finally turn. But you look good doing it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> a good one of these, you know, you can if you can find it, you can go out and get a a good hard top for twelve oh, to fifteen thousand yes, exactly. dollars. Mm -hmm make it a convertible and you you quickly add at least ten thousand dollars to that and on up well they built about sixty just over sixty thousand thunderbirds and fifty nine ten thousand were convertibles and there was a book i got back in the seventies I, I have still have it somewhere tucked away but it had two interesting charts in it that i thought were really fascinating it shows the value curve of a car and it goes straight down uh -huh. to nothing at about twelve years uh -huh and then starts to come almost straight back up again. Meanwhile, how many are left? And it showed that it, when you reach 18 years of age, there's 0.8% wow. or less than 1% of a car left. So I was buying these cars that I have when they were worth nothing at about uh -huh. 14 years of age, and there were still enough of them out there that hadn't been crushed or done away with. And. Uh, like they said, you know, when a car gets old, it has no value and it needs a lot of work. So what's the sense in keeping it? Unless you think it's something yeah, special. Yeah, your crystal ball is, is yes, working properly. Yes, it's working and shined up. Uh, the convertible top on these, they're kind of fun to watch go down. Uh, well, in, they, they initially thought about, they spent a lot of time debating the convertible on this car. First of all, it's a unibody. They have to keep the strength. And, and for the viewers in, that don't know, the unibody means there's there's no frame on the no thing. No frame. It's, yeah. it's all, well, like an old Nash. The Nash was unibody. The Lincoln Zephyrs were. And uh, they thought about a three-piece retractable top, like the retractable Fords. That didn't work at all. So then they thought about having a Targa T-top, which they built a prototype of. It looked really nice. Then they were going to have flaps that lifted up so you could get in easier. Someone came up, and it might have been the same man who came up with the retractable, having a retractable soft top that lifts off and folds up and goes upside down into the trunk and then your trunk is hinged backwards like the retractable uh, Ford. Yeah. And uh, it totally gives it such a clean look and yet you've got, you know, mm -hmm. the best of both. Yeah, some of the 60s had sunroofs in them. 60s had 2,100 sunroofs they made with a metal roof that cranked back uh -huh. and they didn't offer it again till 67, uh -huh. I believe it was. But uh, again, a good idea, but people just didn't spend the money on it.